The sky was red that day. All the smoke, the crap that had been filling the air all summer, it put everything in this amber-red light, like looking at the world through hell-colored glasses. That's how I first saw Yonkers, this little depressed, rust-collar burb just north of New York City. So much of it was for show. Not just the vehicles, but us as well. They had us in MOPP, dude. Mission-oriented protective posture. Big bulky suits and masks that are supposed to protect you from a radioactive or biochem environment. <laughs> dude, we had everything. Tanks, Bradleys, Humvees armed with everything from 50 cals to these new Vasilic heavy mortars. At least those might have been useful. We had Avenger Humvee-mounted Stinger surface-to-air missile sets. We had this AVLB portable bridge layer system, perfect for the three-inch deep creek that ran by the freeway. We had a bunch of XM electronic warfare vehicles, all crammed with radar and jamming gear. And Oh yeah, we even had a whole FOL, family of latrines, just plopped right there in the middle of everything. Why? When the water pressure was still on and the toilets were still flushing in every building and house in the neighborhood. So much we didn't need. So much shit that only blocked traffic and looked pretty. And that's what I think they were really there for, just to look pretty. You know where they put us? Right down on the ground, right behind sandbags or in fighting holes. We wasted so much time, so much energy preparing these elaborate firing positions. Good cover and concealment, they told us. Cover and concealment? Cover means physical protection, conventional protection from small arms and artillery or airdropped ordnance. That sound like the enemy we were about to go up against? Was Zack now calling in airstrikes and fire missions? And why the hell were we worried about concealment when the whole point of the battle was to get Zack to come directly at us? So back asswards, all of it. I'm sure whoever was in charge must have been one of the last of the Fulda fucktards. You know, those generals who spend their Nardrop years training to defend West Germany from Ivan. Tight ass, narrow minded, probably pissed off from so many years of brush fire war. He must have been an FF because everything we did freaking stunk of Cold War static defense. You know, they even tried to dig fighting holes for the tanks. The engineers blasted them right out of the AMP parking lot. There must have been at least one reporter for every two or three uniforms. On foot and in vans, I don't know how many news choppers must have been circling. <laughs> I guess I can see why the powers that be thought that one big stand-up battle was such a good idea. They wanted to show the people that they were still in charge, get them to calm the hell down so they could deal with the real problem. I get it. And because they needed a propaganda smackdown, I ended up in Yonkers. It wasn't the worst place to make a stand. Part of the town sat right in this little valley, and right over the West Hills you had the Hudson River. The Sawmill River Parkway ran right through the center of our main line of defense, and the refugees streaming down the freeway were leading the dead right to us. It was a natural choke point, and it was a good idea. <laughs> the only good idea that day. It was just a trickle at first. Ones and twos staggering between the abandoned cars that jammed the deserted freeway. At least the refugees had been evacuated. Okay, that was another thing they did right. Picking a choke point and clearing the civilians. Great job. Everything else? <laughs> Zack started entering the first kill zone, the one designated for MLRS. I didn't hear the rockets launch. My hood muffled the noise, but I saw them streak towards the target. I saw them arch on their way down as their casings broke away to reveal all those little bomblets on plastic streamers. They're about the size of a hand grenade, anti-personnel with a limited anti-armor capacity. They scattered amongst the Gs, detonating once they hit the road or an abandoned car. Their gas tanks went up in, like, little volcanoes, geysers of fire and debris that added to the steel rain. <laughs> but spy bird uplinks were also showing how truly large the horde was. We might be facing thousands, but behind them were millions. Remember, we were taking on the bulk of New York City's infestation. This was only the head of one really long undead snake stretching all the way back to Times fucking Square. Do you know what it feels like to see a 60-something ton tank fire into a crowd with absolutely ass-all result? We saw bodies blown to shit, tossed into the air, ripped to pieces, even complete heads, live heads with eyes and jaws still moving, popping sky high like freaking crystal corks. We were taking them down, no doubt, but not as many or as fast as we needed to. The stream was now like a river, a flood of bodies slouching, moaning, stepping over their mangled bros as they rolled slowly and steadily toward us like a slow-motion wave. 
We didn't need to see that. I didn't need to know that. That little scared voice wasn't so little anymore. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. And suddenly it wasn't in my head anymore. It was in my earpiece. Every time some jerk-off couldn't control his mouth, Land Warrior made sure the rest of us heard it. There's too many! We gotta get the fuck out of here!
damn it! We're dying in here!